after the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Well, that's from Matthew's Gospel. And his retelling of the resurrection came at a time of great turbulence for Jesus' followers. Jesus' popularity and number of followers had been growing. He was hailed as the one who would restore Israel as foretold by the prophet Jeremiah and had entered Jerusalem in triumph. Yet only a few days later he was tried and put to death on a cross. Excitement turned to grief, hope to fear, and joy to disappointment. Mary Magdalene and her friend, also called Mary, take a significant role in the story. At a time when women didn't have prominent roles in society, the angel, like Jesus, chooses unexpected people to do God's work. Their function in the story is that of witnesses and they can't keep their joy to themselves. It may well be that you're not feeling very joyful at the moment. For we're living in unprecedented times that none of us have had any experience of before. Many of us feel ill-equipped to be teachers in the home, to be carers for relatives that we can no longer visit, to be encouragers for our friends, families and neighbours when challenges confront us. In this new normal, we can no longer rely on supplies being delivered at a time that we choose or on the delivery containing exactly the items that we'd ordered. Our relationships are now conducted by phone, email, Facebook, Zoom, Skype, WhatsApp and similar. Or not at all. Our work is unreliable. School is online, meetings happen in virtual space and programme and reports on television are filed from people's living rooms. We work in our front rooms and sometimes in our pyjamas. We struggle with social distancing and worry about whether our children should be doing lessons because being together seems not enough. We miss physical contact just when we might be most in need of a hug. And we're apart from the things that give us our sense of rootedness and belonging and an experience of faith that's relational and tactile. But I wonder if the Easter story is so familiar to us that we've lost the sense of surprise, the shock, the feeling that the world has been turned upside down, which Mary and the other disciples must have experienced that morning. Remember, they'd left everything to follow Jesus. 
They'd spent time with him, watched him die, and now find his tomb empty. Their emotions would have been in turmoil, just like many of us now. I wonder, for those of us who are Christians, do such strong, deep emotions enter into our relationships with Jesus? How does the knowledge that Jesus is alive again affect us? The fact that our sins are forgiven and that we've been set free from all that threatens to prevent us from becoming whole. Are these just beliefs or pious hopes in our heads? Or do they spill out into our lives, into the people we are in the world? After all her ups and downs, Mary feels anything but safe. And when she finds Jesus alive, she's desperate to cling on to him, to provide some kind of security at last. But Jesus tells her to let go. Her security isn't in holding on to him physically, but in trusting God for the ongoing journey. The same is true for us. As Mary was told by Jesus, security isn't to be found in holding tightly onto the things that are precious, no matter how difficult this may seem. But it's found in somehow letting them go into God's hands. We can be unsure of our ability to trust in God particularly when letting go seems risky or we feel unsafe. Yet we know that beneath it all, God's love is always there with us and for us. Some of the first words Jesus says to Mary are, Do not be afraid. This Easter he says the same to each one of us. So I invite you to have courage to let go of the things that are holding you back and to embrace that because of Jesus and what happened that first Easter day, things will never be the same again. For Jesus is risen. From now on, his story is one story. It's the story of life, of death defeated. The story of Jesus. And today we not only hear but partake in the story of life fulfilled, death defeated, Hope assured. Lord God, today is the day we remember that you have turned history around. You have turned death into life. You have turned despair into hope. You have turned hate into love. Help us in our turn to bring this Easter day to others, to replace their fear with peace, to replace their sadness with joy, to replace their despair with hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.